Hello everyone. This is chapter 11 from my contemporary romance novel Under a Namibian Sky. Naomi's head felt thick with fatigue when the alarm buzzed. She moved onto her elbow, intending to get up, but fell back onto her pillows as the pain in her head grew sharper with the movement. The alarm was set to go off every three minutes until she killed it. When it beeped again, she moaned. She sat up slowly and pushed the off button. Then she got to her feet and went over to her bathroom to find painkillers and to have a warm shower, hoping it would wake her up and ease the headache. The sound of the shower mixed with the roar of the Cessna as it flew over the house, making the turn to land. Naomi dried herself, pulled on her uniform, scraped her hair into a ponytail and ran out the door just as the Cessna was landing on the strip behind the house. Several members of staff, including Auntie Elsa, Kerry and Ota Yun, were already standing near the big thorn tree, waiting for the Cessna. When it came to a stop, everyone waited for its small sandstorm to die down before approaching the plane to welcome back Santina and Luca. Kerry had arranged a wheelchair for Luca. Ota Yun hovered behind it, his hands on his back, unsure if they would need it. Naomi's heart was beating in her throat, her hands clammy. How would it be to see Luca again when she decided that nothing further could happen between them? He'd gone off with the anti-poacher patrol, so perhaps he'd come to the same conclusion. But would that make things easier for her? She prayed it would. Their pilot neighbour disembarked and helped Santina down from the ladder which he'd pulled from the belly of the Cessna. Then he went back inside to help Luca out. Naomi's hand went to her mouth when she saw Luca emerging from the plane looking pale and shaky. At least he was standing by himself. Ota Jan, who had left the wheelchair under the thorn tree, hurried toward Luca. He lifted Luca's other arm over his shoulder and between the pilot on one side of him and Ota Jan on the other, Luca walked slowly to his suite. Auntie Elsa and Santina followed, walking arm in arm. Kerry was busy giving orders and arranging a roster of staff to look after Luca. Naomi stood rooted to the spot. Luca hadn't even glanced in her direction. Although she'd made up her mind about him, it was still a shock to realise he'd evidently come to the same conclusion. It felt as though a big fist had clamped over her heart. When everyone had gone, Naomi slowly pushed the abandoned wheelchair back to its place in the storeroom behind the hangar where Luca's Cessna was parked. On her way back, she wondered if he'd locked it. On a whim, she went inside the hangar and tried the jet's door. To her surprise, it opened with a click. Checking that no one saw her, she climbed on board. The smell of expensive leather stopped her in her tracks. Memories of Luca burned in her eyes as tears rolled down her cheeks. It was both torture and rapture to be here. She sat down on the sofa they had occupied. It felt as though it had happened years ago instead of only two nights ago. Naomi gave herself over to the memories and her tears. It would most likely be the last time she'd be able to be here. It didn't feel as though much time had passed, but when she emerged from the hangar, the sun indicated it was past noon already. A member of the kitchen staff came running toward her. Nonna, you must come. He's been asking for you. The woman hovered as though she was waiting for Naomi to follow her at once. He's all right, isn't he? Yes, he is. 
OK, I have to get something from my room first. I'll go to him very soon. The woman scurried off, no doubt to inform Luca that she'd found Naomi and passed on his message. Naomi hastened to her room. Her face was blotchy from all the crying. She washed her face, applied a tinted moisturiser to hide the fact further, and combed out her hair. The face staring back at her from the mirror looked passable. It'll have to do. Much more important was getting her head together for their meeting. Already her heart was beating faster than she felt comfortable with, and her hands were clammy again. She took a few deep breaths before opening her door. Then she lifted her chin, closed the door behind her, and walked to Luca's suite. Several members of staff stood outside his door. Laughter from within greeted Naomi when she arrived there. Luca looked much better than the last time she'd seen him. Cleaned and propped up against a gazillion pillows, he appeared as much a prince as anyone could. Flowers, cards, chocolates, food and drink surrounded him. Santina and Auntie Elsa sat in two armchairs near his bed. All three wore smiles. The happy light mood in the room brought the realisation that Naomi had expected something more serious. For once, she was glad to be wrong. Luca looked up as she entered. The smile on his face expanded. Here she is. I was beginning to think you'd forgotten all about me. Naomi smiled, despite herself. I had some things to do first, but I'm glad you're being looked after so well. She looked pointedly at all the goodies that surrounded him. Luca's smile turned wicked and he winked at Naomi. I know, I'm being spoilt and I love it. I can just imagine... She sat down on the edge of the chair opposite his bed, leaned forward and smiled at him. She may as well play the game. Anyway, you called, my lord? Luca's eyes glinted. I did indeed. I was hoping you would give me a foot massage. Auntie Elsa and Santina burst out laughing as much as at Luca's unusual request as the look on Naomi's face. Santina got up and gave Luca a peck on the cheek. I don't think we are needed here any longer. I don't enjoy watching foot massages. Feet are such ugly things. Auntie Elsa, laughing, followed her friend from the room. Luca was still smiling at Naomi, expectation in his eyes. I'm serious. I walked extremely far yesterday. My feet are very sore and in need of some tender, loving care. And you thought I could provide that? Naomi was more than a little annoyed for falling so easily into Luca's trap. It was one thing to make a decision when he wasn't around, but he was apparently hell-bent on destroying her intentions. She should have known. Hmm, about yesterday... Luca looked suitably guilty. Yes? I'm curious, why did you go off with the anti-poacher unit? Naomi took some comfort in the fact that Luca was practically squirming against his many pillows. I know, I should have told you, but when I found Otayan and the guys in the kitchen in the middle of the night, I thought it would be a good idea. I really want to help. Naomi wasn't smiling anymore. But it's serious, Luca. You could have been badly injured or even killed. Luca was smiling again. I didn't know you cared, amore. It's no laughing matter, Luca. It really isn't. Naomi got up and paced the room, her arms folded across her chest. Can you imagine what would have happened if they had killed you? What about Santina, your father, your business, Desert Lodge? It was irresponsible, and I'm amazed that someone with your background would do something like that. Luca contemplated her for a few moments before speaking. You're really mad at me, aren't you? Yes, I am. You didn't think about anyone else, did you? Actually, I did. I thought about you. 
I really wanted to help. I still do. Then why don't you use your photographs instead and do something with that article to National Geographic you spoke about? You may not realize it and they'd never say anything to you, but you put Otayan and the guards in danger too. They had to look out for you instead of dealing with the poachers as they've been trained to do. Luca held up his hands in defense. Okay, okay, you've made your point. I'm sorry. It's true. I hadn't thought about putting the guys in danger, but I can see that now. I'll do what I can to make it up to them. Main thing, we caught the poachers. His smile was back, an indication of what he must have been like as a little boy, excited about the adventure that turned out all right in the end, even though it could have gone so disastrously wrong. Smiling at me won't help your case. Then, amore mio, would you tell me what would? I don't want us to argue. I'm not arguing with you. I'm stating facts. Well, will you come over here and state more facts? Damn. Naomi knew this moment might come. What to do? Changing the subject might be safest. I thought you wanted a foot massage. Luca smiled like a winner. I do. But I thought you weren't going to offer. I'm not offering. You asked for one. Don't twist my words. Luca pushed himself up against the pillows. He wiggled his eyebrows at her. Hmm. I'm loving fiery Naomi. Naomi sat down on the edge of the chair again. She took a deep breath to calm herself. Stop it, Luca. Do you want a foot massage or not? His smile broadened again. I'm yearning for a foot massage from you. Can't you see? Naomi smiled despite herself. Fine. I'll get some oil. Do you like coconut oil? Luca reclined dramatically on his pillows. Oh, yes. That would be heavenly amore. The aroma of our first beach vacation together. Naomi ignored the last comment and went in search of some coconut oil in the kitchen. A bowl of warm water and some gloves completed her arsenal of goodies. She'd use his shower gel in the water. Luca was reading a newspaper when she returned but set it aside immediately. I can't thank you enough for doing this for me. Naomi set the bowl and the coconut oil down on the floor at the foot of his bed and pulled up a chair. You're a guest here, Luca. I'm happy to make your stay with us more comfortable if I can. Luca was silent as Naomi went into his bathroom to retrieve his shower gel. She squirted a little into the bowl of the water and swished it around to produce foam. Then she donned the gloves and lifted the sheet away from his feet. She placed a towel under his feet and washed them. Luca remained silent without, throughout. Naomi didn't look up from her work. She assumed his silence meant he was still reading the newspaper. Luca's feet looked sore indeed, red and swollen underneath. Naomi gently massaged them, not wanting to hurt him. She didn't know much about massages, so imagined what she'd like done to her own feet and then did that for him. Naomi meant it when she'd said she was happy to make his stay comfortable at Desert Lodge. He was a guest. But how was she going to get through the next few days without getting into a conversation with him about what had happened between them? Did she want to talk about it? It happened. It was a mistake. She should never have allowed it. And when Luca was injured, it only confirmed for her that she couldn't get involved with him. Luca's even breathing alerted her to the fact that he was sleeping. Naomi took the opportunity to look at him, to seal him into her memory. His beautiful face with a high forehead over which black curls spilled, the long eyelashes that touched his cheeks with his eyes closed, the proud straight nose, the full sensual lips and his chiselled jaw sporting dark designer stubble. A plaster on the side of his head indicated where the poacher had hit him. Naomi's eyes travelled lower, 
to his neck as he lay with his head to the left. She remembered the skin there, so soft and yet so manly. One of his arms lay relaxed on the bed, a small plaster, the only indication that he'd had a drip in his vein. Naomi could still feel the sensation of the soft hairs on his forearm beneath her fingers. Slowly, so as not to wake him, she removed the gloves and pulled the sheets over his feet again. The smell of coconut oil and one last look at his sleeping form would be forever in her mind. The memory would be one more Luca keepsake, tucked safely in her heart. Thank you very much for watching, thank you for listening, thank you for sharing and liking my videos and thank you most of all for subscribing to my channel. By doing that you allow me to make more videos so thank you very much, I'm very grateful for that. Until next time.